Hello, Bastineers. This is Patrick Leader, and this is the first of seven videos that I'll be doing to discuss how to play Vast the Crystal Caverns. I uh, will do one video that is just a quick outline of the objectives, uh, what each group is trying to do. I guess that's an objective. The, uh, the flow of play, how to set up the game, and then I'll do five videos, one for each role, discussing how to play each role, and then I'll discuss the variance in kind of an appendix sort of video at the end, if I have time to film it. Uh, I'm doing this really quick on a Saturday afternoon. It is raining. You might hear some thunder and lightning outside. It'll add to the ambience a little bit. Um, but let's, uh, let's start talking about the game. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, I... I'm just going to change my view here so I can see what, I'm, what the camera's looking at. I have set up the board, the table here. Uh, as you can see, I have the knight sitting over here. I have the goblin sitting next to her. Across the table, I have the dragon. And then the cave. And then the thief. That is the order that all the players should sit in when they're playing the game. In the upper right corner of each board, it shows you a number, and that shows you your seating position. Sorry about the glare from the lights there. Uh -uh. That order is very important and should be maintained. You don't necessarily have to sit in that order, but for sure, please play in that order. So, uh, just going around the table real quick. In a five-player game, the knight's goal is to... Excuse me, let me study this. The knight's goal is to kill the dragon player. So she's trying to gain strength by gaining grit. She, with grit, she gains those yellow cubes, or those are called hero cubes, which she can spend on her abilities and kill the dragon. The goblin player has three tribes that they're using uh, to rally their forces, gather their monsters, gather their secrets together, and come out of the darkness and kill the knight. They win if the knight wins, because they're trying to defend their home from the knight. The dragon player is trying to, I got knocked a little bit, is trying to move all these sloth cubes. The dragon has been asleep for 25 years, and the dragon is trying to wake up from that sleep. 25, 30 years, maybe 100 years. Uh, the dragon is trying to wake up from that sleep by moving all these sloth cubes down to this wakefulness track. Once the dragon has 11 uh, gathered, the dragon can escape the board uh, through a crystal, which is one of the spaces on the board, and move to the exit. Once the dragon moved to the exit, it has escaped and has won the game. <clears throat> the cave player is trying to control the flow of the game to make the game go long enough that the cave can get all of the tiles into play. <clears throat> once all the tiles are into play, the cave will start to collapse. And once the cave has removed five crystal tokens, I'm sorry, excuse me, five crystal tiles, it's a very important distinction, these are tiles, uh, once those have been removed, the, uh, the crystals are load-bearing, and the entire complex comes down on everybody, and the cave wins. <clears throat> a little bit of a pirate victory for the cave. The thief, who was added during the Kickstarter, <clears throat> is trying to... Sorry about that, the cord got tangled up on my leg. Uh, the thief is trying to buy his freedom from a warlock that's cursed him to keep repeating this day over and over. He has... Uh, he will go into the cave, he will attempt to get six treasures by stealing them from the other players or from the cave itself, and get off the board with six treasures. He can stow the treasures at the entrance one by one uh, as he goes, and once he has six, he escapes and wins the game. <clears throat> he will also be working against all the other players to slow them down, just like the cave does. <clears throat> Let me move the camera back to center here. Set up the game really quickly. You need to put the center tile, which is the entrance, it's the one with the ladder. It also says Vast the Crystal Caverns on the back, into the center of play. You shuffle up the tiles. I have removed from the tiles the crystals and the vaults. The crystals will always be in the game, and the vaults will only be in games with the thief in them. Take these out if you're not playing with the thief. <clears throat> uh, shuffle up all the remaining tiles. So I'll give them a quick shuffle. Do it, do it, do it. And put one tile around the entrance. The cave player can do this, or you can help the cave player, of course. Uh, then, divide the remaining tiles into three stacks. 
uh, roughly equal. I'm usually pretty good about it. They won't be equal. There's, that can't, that's not possible. And then mix a third of each of the crystals, which is three. There are nine crystals into the tiles. And mix the vaults in also. So two in each stack. And then stack up, shuffle these each stack, and then stack them all up. I'll do that real quick. I'm sure you all know what stacking looks like. If the knight's in the game, uh, she starts play in the center of the board. I use the standee to represent her because it's a little bit easier to see. Uh -uh. All right, so we stack, we shuffle each stack up, we stack these all up. The reason we do this is to keep the crystals so that they're distributed throughout the game and the vaults so that they're distributed throughout the game. Okay, that is my quick overview of how the game is played. Uh, I have one more thing I want to talk about. No, it's okay. I'll talk about it when we get to the other parts. Thank you. <clears throat> this really cracked there.